We're here today at Stop Tech with Eric. Um, Eric, what do you got new this year? Well, some of the new kits that we've developed are for early Porsche kits uh, from the 60s up to the late 80s, all the air-cooled cars, uh, optimized specifically for smaller wheel and tire packages. Uh, we've actually optimized them to work with the popular Fuchs wheels that most guys are running either direct fit or with spacers, just, just a mild, mild spacer. Okay. Um, we have three different levels. Level one is kind of like a street car that you want a nice brake upgrade with. Uh, we offered it with either the anodized calipers or uh, any of our normal color options. These would have dust boots, um, anti-rattle hardware, uh, low noise, low dust pads available or performance pads. We also have a level two and level three option for guys that are more into the performance aspect, looking to maybe track the cars or even, even use them in a, in a Porsche club race. And then we also have a, a little bit of a step down with an anodized uh, forge caliper. Okay. Um, and we've also implemented this, this small wheel and tire package uh, idea. We also have just released a Miata kit as well uh, for all the, uh, the Gen 1 and 2 Miatas. We have Gen 3 Miata kits as well. Uh, but same kind of thing where it's a direct fit application, uh, fits the popular wheel sizes, uh, and really provides a nice upgrade. Um, I see some trick pistons on the table there. You want to explain those? Oh yeah, absolutely. So we do a, um, in the past we've done titanium backing plates to help prevent heat transfer into the calipers, but we've uh, designed a, uh, a titanium nose that actually uh, clips onto the, the piston itself um, and provides a heat transfer uh, protection. Um, we do some castellation on there to reduce uh, direct contact with the pad backing plate for reduced um, um, conduction of heat through the uh, piston itself. Um, and it's also large enough to shroud the dust boot on a, on a caliper that might be using a dust boot like in an off-road application or a street car uh, where you want to keep the dust boots on the car. I know, I know a lot of guys that do track days end up saying the dust boot's on fire. <laughs> yeah, well they're definitely sacrificial. We actually moved to a silicone dust boot recently that, that holds up better to that, but um, there's only so much you can do uh, when you want to keep those OE features on something that's seeing hardcore track use. Okay, uh, do you want to explain a little bit about your new pad lineup? Yeah, so we've uh, revamped our pad line. We used to have our, our, our StopTech Street Performance pad was our go-to pad. Um, it had the 309 prefix. Um, so if, you've had, if you're used to our partner ring scheme, it has a 309 in the beginning of it. Uh, that material hasn't changed, but we're now calling it the StopTech Sport. Okay. Um, and then we've also introduced a more our fr street friendly pad called our StopTech Street Pad. Um, and then we also have our own line of race friction. So we, we basically have three levels of performance, street, sport, and race. Um, street is recommended for your, your typical daily driver with occasional high-speed stops if you do a canyon run now and then or just like to get up to speed on an empty highway. Uh, the sport pad we recommend for aggressive street, light track, and autocross. And then the race pad is obviously for dedicated track usage. Uh, cool. Uh, you want to talk about your uh, pro touring brakes? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, StopTech is, we've always gotten a lot of requests for, for upgrades for muscle cars and hot rods, and we've never really had a solution, but we've, we finally have a way to, to put modern brakes on some of the older vehicles. Uh, we have a partner uh, with a company called uh, Ron Sutton Race Technology, okay. and he's a really well-known developer of chassis and suspension systems for, the, for those cars. I have his book. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's, he's legit, no doubt about it. So he's developed uh, three separate kits to work with uh, some very common GM spindles, the, the AFX spindle. Um, and uh, we, we turn this around to the back, we can actually see he's integrated this, this three-point bracket that, that mounts to the stock spindle and allows our, our existing Corvette, C5, C6 Corvette, hats and brackets and calipers to bolt right up. Um, he's also got a special um, hub assembly that he's developed with a, with a bearing that's more up to speed with, with modern G levels. So you don't so, get the knockback. Correct, yeah. So the, the OEM type bearings on these cars were rated about 975 ish pounds. Mm -hmm. He's got bearings that are rated up over 2,000. So a significant increase in um, ability to prevent deflection uh, under hard, hard cornering. Um, you're saying uh, the piston sizing is uh, appropriate for manual brakes, too. Right. So the StopTex paradigm has always allowed us to optimize piston sizes for specific vehicles. and. Uh, a lot of the guys that are running these pro touring like to run a manual brake system to really clean up the firewall. So these are actually built with that in mind, running a manual system. Um, you get that race car pedal feel, and he can opt out. He can tweak the piston sizes for a little bit softer pedal, more more comfortable for daily driving, or that really high high firm pedal for that that race car type feel. So it almost feels like a dual master cylinder. Pedal Basically, box. right, but with a with an OEM type master cylinder that's easy to find and service. All right, that's pretty cool. Well, that's Stop Tech for this year. Um, thank you very much, Eric. Thanks, Mike. Good to see you again.